welcome to uh, Bodget Central. Unfortunately, the adapter plate that I've ordered for the C82 Axiom hasn't arrived. Well, actually, it's got a little bit lost in the post somewhere. So what I'm going to need to do is temporarily make something. So I've got a couple of pieces of plywood um, and I've got the template here now for the Axiom. OK, so the deal is that we do not talk about this again before I show you this because it's a bit of a bodge. No, it's not too bad, really. So basically, I've cut a couple of pieces of ply and all I've done is I've just fitted this in using the template. So with the template, I used the four corners here. So I put four dots in and I got myself a 24 mil drill, drilled the corners, joined the corners up and cut that out. So I'm going to fix that in for now and then until my proper bracket arrives, I'm actually trying and re remake this, put some fiberglass in and some uh, gel coat um, and then cut it to the right size and then I can position it actually where I want because um, it's going to be a bit lower than that. Um, so that could be one option anyway, but um, for now it's it's in a plywood mount. Um, I just need to fix the uh, bits on the back to hold it in place. Uh, and then um, it's good, or at least for now anyway. Now you probably saw at the end of the electronics video that I'd actually tested the Axum in the boat before. It turns out that I'd actually got a C-Torque to NG converter already installed, and this must have happened when that Raymarine GPS was replaced. You can see it at the bottom here. Basically, the C-Torque connector comes into the yellow um, socket on the middle here, and then this provides you with a breakout into NMEA 2000. It follows the same standard, it uses the two terminators at the end, and this unit can be extended onto something else. So it was really good to find this in the boat, and it meant that we didn't have to purchase this device. I then spent a little bit of time tidying all the wiring down here because it was in a bit of a mess, and removing any unnecessary connectors that we didn't need anymore. I then powered up the device and everything that I could normally see on my C80 was visible now on the Axiom. You can see here that it's showing the wind information, it's showing a tidal flow, depth. It is showing speed over the ground but we weren't moving. In terms of AIS information, obviously this device is a lot more advanced than the C80 and it can do things like collision avoidance, it can show you where you're going to meet a target like that. So there's lots of things here I need to play with. And here's some dashboard information. Now this is actually linked to the Raspberry Pi, so you can start to see a few things here that are going to come in um, over the next sort of few weeks as I get this all set up. But I've already got battery data in there and I've already managed to make the RPM information from the engine and temperatures make its way over to the Axiom. So we'll show that in some more detail. Here's just a quick look through the dashboards. In order to get that data across, I needed to extend the NMEA 2000 network. And you can see here that I've now installed a backbone cable, which is on the right hand side. That's the black and blue cable that you can see there. I then fished that cable all the way through the boat. And I connected that cable to the five way block that you can see in the back of this picture. And you can also see on the left hand side the terminator that I removed from the steering pedestal to install the backbone cable, which now means that I've got a terminator inside and a terminator outside, marking the two ends of my network. In front of that screen, you can see the very high tech screw holding device that I made using a bit of black tape. And that's just because that this unit is mounted upside down. And here's an example of that AIS in operation. And just while it's nice, I'm going to replace this. So you probably saw this before, this piece of wood that I put in temporarily just to mount the Axiom. I'm just going to take that out now because the bracket's come. Um, so I'll just go and grab the bracket and we'll get rid of this. Put your caps and things on and just made it smartened it up a little bit, but we can actually put the proper bracket in now. So we'll get on with that. So hopefully you can see I've put the new bracket in now. Um, and this is obviously where the unit will sit. And it says to use a marine sealant. Now I haven't done that. I've used uh, it's bo boitrel tape, um, which is this kind of gooey stuff, but it doesn't go off. Um, and the reason I've used that is because there's different thicknesses here. So this side is really, really thin. And then there's a bit of a gap here where the, the fiberglass is bowed in over time. So what I've done is I've used this because it doesn't set and you can push it in. And then now I've tied everything down, I'm just going to cut this off with a knife and just smarten all this edge up. Um, but it just means that if I ever need to take it out, it's not like sticker flex or anything like that, that you just can't get off. Um, it will never really set, so it just stays sort of like this. 
Um, but yeah, we'd cut that off with a sharp knife and that'll be it. Okay, so it's all trimmed up now, and then we've just got to apply this gasket. So this gasket goes between the display and the um, backing bit. Well, I hope that's been useful. I know I've had a couple of questions whether my open porter setup is going anywhere and the answer to that is no. As you're going to see over the next couple of videos, we're going to start some really good integrations on NME A2000 networks now that I've got a display that supports that. Um, and as you can see here, I've already got some of that information coming across and I'll go into a bit more detail on how to set that all up. See you next time.